reports on what they termed as a hurried cabinet decision that recommended mandatory COVID-19 testing of all passengers regardless of the vaccination status. Appearing before the Parliamentary Committee on Trade, Industry and Tourism, chaired by MP Mwine Mbaka, officials from the Aviation Authority disclosed they lack facilities. The Parliamentary Committee on Trade, Industry and Tourism spent part of Monday afternoon interrogating officials from the Uganda Civil Aviation Authority and leaders of the Uganda Tour Operators Association over the alleged mistreatment of tourists entering the country at Entebbe International Airport. Where someone was telling tourists not to come to Uganda and there was a picture of some people at the airport waiting for the answers. We've been having quite a bit of uh, challenges as far as uh, handling of clients is concerned mm -hmm. at the airport. The tourists are not suffering. In their submission, the legislators were treated to disagreement between tour operator Amos Wegesa and Ruth Tumsime, the chairperson of the Tour Operators Association, mm -hmm. with Wegesa insisting that there is mm -hmm. poor management of tourists at Entebbe International mm -hmm. Airport. People are arriving late and are really tired, they have issues, they have been, you know, it's just an inconvenience for many of the clients. Uh, so I think can tell you, I think those who are older, those with families, climbing up ladders, that the city and waiting for the results is one very big challenge. A tourist is not suffering at the airport. They are actually getting preferential treatment, and I will say this, it might affect me tomorrow, but it is the truth. And the truth is important. I have clients who have the clients of the guy called Jodre. They came in last night, tested up this morning, they don't have their tests. They took the at 8 a.m. They don't have they could not go to Windy because they did not have their results delivered to them. The other day I saw a minister of health saying things had changed. And that now you get you 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 just see something that you even find out that they were even more online. And now we are getting different information. The investigations followed a viral video involving one passenger at the airport discouraging other tourists not to use Entebbe International Airport, which the Uganda Civil Aviation Authority dismissed as mere propaganda. The two operators, however, demanded that fully vaccinated passengers and those that have tested 72 hours before their flight should be allowed into the country. For us as a country, as, 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 I think as an industry, I would request that people that have done uh, COVID jobs and have done uh, mm -hmm. testing 72 mm -hmm. hours before mm -hmm. come to the country mm -hmm. should be let go. But in regard to the processes at the airport, I agree with Mr. Wekesa. If we can do away with the test, we will be grateful. The Uganda Civil Aviation Authority also admitted to some of the challenges at the airport resulting from the rush cabinet decision on mandatory testing. As Uganda Civil Aviation Authority, we were not prepared for it, and even the facilities, some of them are still under construction. And I can even see people are almost angry about it at CAA. Please, please save CAA. <laughs> save Uganda Civil Aviation Authority. Alex Mugasha, Sam Ivanda Mugabe, NBS Live at Night. Even more stories making headlines, universities have asked government to reduce or even totally scrap the cost of data for education institutions, something they say is hindering their move to digitize education. Whereas universities were meant to open today, the institutions have only opened for a few of their students and say they have to continue teaching online to be able to social distance in classrooms and deal with backlog. Monday, 1st November was the opening day for tertiary institutions after four months of closure, but the schools are only half open. Tertiary institutions have had to readjust their facilities to conform to the new standard operating procedures, among them social distancing. This inevitably means that whereas government has opened up universities, some students will still have to stay at home. Makiri mm -hmm. University Chancellor Professor Barabas Nawangwe reveals that only first years and finalists have been allowed to report back to the university. We are receiving the students in a standard manner. So we are continuing with blended learning. Some students will be here physically to study. Other students are continuing studying online. 
The case is the same at Victoria University, where the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Lawrence Muganga, says they have had to even set up a vaccination centre at the university for returning students and lecturers. We have a vaccination centre. Uh, one of the requirements is to make sure all staff are vaccinated. Students, as they come back, they are vaccinated. And uh, I think we are up to that record of 100% now of our staff being vaccinated. Uh, students, by the time they broke off, we were at around 85%. And while there will be some students in class, the rest will have to continue with classes online. The universities now say data prices are not helping them teach online. Don't invest in digital literacy, in supporting our young people to have this skill. And they can only have this skill by being availed with data to stay online, to study online. Even when they come back to our classrooms, they have to have access to data to do these things online. They can't afford it. Parents have been hit by this pandemic. Some of them have no ability to fund these kind of requirements. Dr. Muganga says the price of data is making it impossible for Ugandan institutions to conform to the dictates of the times. He says even when schools reopen fully, internet learning is the future that may never be avoided. The most important skill in this day and age, the 21st century, is digital literacy. The way we used to know reading, writing as part of the literacies we are looking for today is the digital literacy. You can't have that skill if you have not practiced, studied online. The trend today of learning is that it has to happen anywhere, anytime. Any education system that does not provide anywhere, anytime learning, then it is doomed to fail. Then comes the tuition question. Whereas students return to study, for Makerere University, they will only spend a month at the university to make way for the newcomers with overlapping years. This means that first semester for those who are reported today ends on 27th this month. But tuition remains the same as it was for a four-month semester. The finalists and the graduate students also will be here and they will study for two weeks and then they, they sit examination. That is the finalists and the graduate students. The first years will continue studying because there are some who, who must do laboratory work. They will continue studying for one month up to uh, 27th November. Then they will go away and continue studying online. The university says they are not decreasing tuition fees due to the new expenditures on data, buying computers and sanitizers. Teaching and learning has been going on even if the students are not here. And remember, for us it is even more expensive to handle the classes that way. Because we have, have had to buy laptops and the, to, so that we can facilitate our lecturers, we have to buy more, more bandwidth and it is not very cheap. So for us as a university, it is even more expensive to do the online classes. So it is not that because students are not here physically, therefore we are spending less on them. No, we are actually spending more, but we have said we are not going to increase fees. Actually, we have now frozen the fees because of the COVID pandemic, which has affected everybody. But we... Daniel 